Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to ASAL Community Church, where serving and giving begins. We look to the author and finisher of our faith, Jesus Christ, who demonstrated the greatest example of service and sacrifice. We believe by following his example, we can unlock the abundance of this life and be assured about our glorious, boundless future. As we gather here today, we acknowledge the power of the triune God. We offer sincere praises to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We worship and adore the maker of the heavens and earth. Indeed, we collectively affirm. We desire godly change in our lives. We are expecting God to meet us here in a mighty way. We are determined to leave this place wiser, stronger, more joyful, and equipped with biblical truth to help us conquer the week ahead. We expect God's best, leaning on him for daily direction and resolving to renew our minds and surrender our hearts through his word. We long to understand the true posture of worship, the power of earnest praise, and the blessings of hearing the word and applying it to our lives. As we look around, we realize that serving the Lord is not confined to these walls. God gathers us here for instruction, but sends us out to share the message of reconciliation. Acceptance of the shed blood of Jesus, his death, burial, and resurrections are essential to abundance in this life and the next. We are here to win souls for Christ. Encourage those who do not know him personally and build up believers to accept Christ's call and live a purpose-filled life. Everyone is welcome here at ASAL Community Church where serving and giving begins. Well, here we are, our first service for the year 2023. And it's a blessing to be here. And so tonight, we're gonna spend a little bit of time in prayer. And I just wanna encourage those who have something on your heart tonight, if you want to join me and pray, uh, the mic is available uh, in the back, or you can come up here to the platform. But we always believe that the word of God is powerful, it's what we need in this day and this time. And so we're just gonna pray and lift up whatever the Holy Spirit just put upon our hearts. And so this evening, Father, first of all, we just wanna thank you and praise you for your goodness and your mercy and your grace. Lord God, you are King, you are Lord, you are High Priest. You are our Abba Father. And we thank you, Lord God, for loving us, keeping us. You brought us through 2022 here to be here today in 2023. And we recognize, Lord God, your hand on us, Lord God. We thank you for your protection, Father. We thank you for your provision, Lord God, that you provide, Father. Only you can do that, Lord. And so, Father, we just thank you tonight, Lord God. We just exalt you and glorify your name. You are worthy of praise, honor, glory, power, majesty. Lord God, you deserve it all, Father. So we lift you up. You said we are to acknowledge you in all of our ways, Lord God, and you would direct our path, Lord God. So we acknowledge you right now that you are our king. You're the lover of our soul, Lord God. And we thank you and we praise you for who you are, Lord God, and how you love us, Father. It's your love, Father, that's enduring, it's unending, Lord God, and we thank you for that. So, Lord God, you said to lift up those that are in authority, Father. So we take this time, Father, to lift up those who are in authority, Father. Father, we lift up our government to you, Lord God. We lift up those authorities, Father, that are on high, Lord God, making decisions that impact your people. Your word says that when the righteous are in rule, Lord God, the people rejoice. But when the wicked are in rule, Lord God, the people complain, Lord God. And so, Father, we just decree and declare that your righteousness will prevail in our government, Lord God. We lift up our president. We 
lift up the house, Lord God. We lift up the Senate, Lord God. We lift up every single person, Lord God, in authority, Father. And we pray, Lord, that their hearts would turn to you, Lord God. That they would seek your face, Father God. That they would submit their way to you, Lord God. That they would allow you, Father, to draw them in, Lord God. Because you have a plan and you have a purpose, Lord God, for their lives, Lord God. And Father, we pray that all wickedness, Lord God, and all of that that is not of you be cut off from our government, Lord God. We come against, Lord God, those demonic spirits, Lord God, that want to infiltrate our government, our nation, Lord God. We bind it in the name of Jesus and we plead the blood, Lord God. So we thank you, Lord God, from the highest level to our local authorities, Lord God. We pray that you would just stretch forth your hand, Father, to do signs, miracles, and wonders in our nation, Lord God. We need you, Father. We need you, Holy Spirit. We need a revival in the hearts of your people, Lord God. And Father, we pray for a spirit of unity, Lord God. Unity among men and women, Father, that you have called, Lord God, to minister, Father. Those that have been given charge to be shepherds and pastors and evangelists and preachers and teachers, Lord God. We pray right now, Lord God, that your anointing would be on them, Father, that they would open their hearts and submit to your way, Lord God, that they would drop their plans, Lord God, and ask and seek your face and see what it is that you are saying, what you want, Lord God. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that no program, Lord God, none of the things, Father, that man makes, Lord God, would endure, Father, but only your word will stand, Lord God. So we pray tonight, Lord God, that you would touch their hearts father that they would yield to you Lord God that they would le yield to your leading father not their own way but to you Lord God your way father your purpose your plans Lord God we pray tonight Lord God and we thank you father for those that you have placed in authority over us Lord God it's not about what we think. It's not even our opinion, Lord God, but it's what you say, Father. And you take everything, Lord God, that's not good, and you will work it, Father, that it will benefit your people, Lord. So we pray and we thank you, Lord God. We pray peace, Lord God, especially in this community, Lord God, especially in this time and this season, Lord God. There are a lot of people, Father, that are they are, you know, just in doubt, Lord God. They're worried. They have anxiety. They have things that are going on, Father, that you said that if they would just receive your peace, Lord God, that all of that stuff, Lord God, it, it doesn't even matter, Father. It's what you say about it, Lord God. Help us to identify, Father, with you. You are the one who made us in your image, in your likeness, Lord God. And it's what you say about us, Lord God, not what anyone else says, Lord God, but what you say, Father. So, Lord God, help us to connect with you father help us to be a praying people lord god help us to seek your face lord god when our bodies and our our soul man wants to do what it wants to do lord god draw us lord god help us to turn to you lord god help our ears to be attentive to you lord god that we hear your voice and we don't follow after another one lord god father help us to take our stance in you lord god that we will declare the word of the lord the works of the lord in this time and in this season Lord God, we thank you, Father. We thank you for your spirit, Lord God, that is in us, Lord God. You put it in us, Lord God, and you cause us to be able to do many things, Lord God, that we are conquerors, Lord God, that we are not fickle and we're not weak, Lord God, but we're strong in the power of your might, Lord. So we praise you tonight, Father. We thank you for what you want to do and what you have already done and what you're going to do in your people, Lord God. We thank you, Father, that there is unity Father, in all of the church and the worship houses, even in this area, Lord God, even in this region, Father. So we lift up those men and women of God, Father, to you. And we thank you for the congregants, Lord God, those that come alongside and help, Lord God, to, to grow the ministry, to reach the community, Father. There are a lot of people, Father, that are homeless, Lord God. A lot of people are doing with, without so many things, Father, that you say that we should already have, Lord God. And so we pray, Father, that you put it on the hearts of people to continue to give and to sow into the ministries, Lord God, that help and assist people, Lord God. So we praise you tonight. We thank you, Father, for your love. We thank you for your goodness, Lord God. We thank you for a revelation of your word. We need your word, Father. It's not what anyone else say, Lord God. 
not even how we think about it. It's not even our personal view, Lord God. It is what your word says, and we need Holy Spirit to give us a revelation of what your word is saying to us now, Lord God. So we thank you, Father, for every word that's going to come from this platform from today until the end of the year, Lord God, that it is powerful, Lord God, that it will set free, Lord God, that it will deliver, Lord God, that it will touch the hearts of your people, Lord God, that it will help us to mature and to grow, Lord God. We thank you for every message going forth from this point on, Lord God, that it is going to change your people, Lord God, that they are going to have a better understanding of who they are in you, Lord God. So we praise and we thank you tonight, Father. Hallelujah. We give you the glory, Lord. We give you the praise, Father. You are so worthy, Lord. Lord, help us to be a praying people, to seek your face, Lord. To not lean to our own understanding, Father, but to acknowledge you, to seek you, Father. We need you, Lord. We need your presence. So we thank you, Father, for the word that's going to come forth tonight, Lord. <laughs> We're excited about what you're going to do. And I just sense in my spirit that the Lord is going to do something wonderful in this ministry this year. Like never before, I declare it, I decree it in the name of Jesus that wonders are going to come out of Asaw Community Church. It is going to be known in this community for a church that love people, that have a heart for people. So we thank you, Lord God. We thank you for your power and your presence, Father, in here. When people walk into this building, Lord God, they will sense your presence. We thank you, Father. We call it forth now in the name of Jesus, Father that there will be no lack, Lord God, not in this place, not in your people, Lord God, but they have everything that they need, Lord God, to do all that you have purpose in their hearts to do, Lord. It is your will, not our will, Lord God. May it be so in the name of Jesus. And we pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody else have anything on their heart that they, the Lord's put on their heart to pray? Mic's open. Hallelujah. I know, Terrell, you got something in you. I know you do. Because you a praying woman, I know you do. do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Amen, amen. As we continue to look to the Lord in prayer, mm. Father God, we thank you. Father God, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise on tonight. Holy Spirit, you are welcome into this place. Holy Spirit, you are welcome into this place. Inhabit the praises of your people. Father God, I am just want to give up thanks to you on today, Father God. Just for carrying us through just today, Father God. We thank you right now for your grace, your mercy, your loving kindness, and your tender mercy. Father God, we thank you for another year, Father God. Thank you for Sister Jeanette, Father God, who... Just started the prayer, Father God, but we just can't thank you enough, Father God. We'll be here praying all night, Father God. But, Lord, I just want to take this moment to tell you thank you, Father God. And, Lord, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, we are praying for our pastor on today, Father God. Lord, we are praying for him, Father God. Continue, Father God, to anoint him, Father God, from the crown of his head, Father God, to the sole of his feet, Father God. Lord, I declare that no weapon formed against him shall prosper, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, that you will keep him covered with the blood of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, I tell you, thank you, Father God, that you give him the twos in 2023 that he needs, Father God. 
to choose to preach, to teach, and do what you call him to do, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, lead him, guide him, Father God, in the right direction that he needs to go, Father God. Oh, be with him right now, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. We know it ain't easy being a leader, Father God, but we thank you for Asaph, Father God. We thank you for our power. Pastor, Father God, we thank you for his wife, Father God, and we just want to tell you, thank you, Father God. We believe, Father God, what you're doing within this ministry, Father God, and I just want to tell you, thank you, Father God. In your word, Father God, it is you, Father God, that we look to, Father God. We don't look to men, we don't look to women, but we look to you, Father God, because the word of God says that we can look to the ills which cometh our help, and all of our help, Father God comes from you father god so we thank you we thank you on tonight father god for what you're doing right now holy spirit we thank you we thank you we thank you father god we thank you father god as we look to you right now father god hmm. Let the words of my mouth, Father God, because everything that come out of my mouth, I want to be acceptable and pleasing in your sight, Father God. Lord, we just say thank you, Father God. I'm already praying, Father God, for the Bible study, Father God, that's taking place on 2023, Father God. You're going to give him every word, every scripture that he needs, Father God. Every word, Father God, we just claim it. We believe it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. 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 He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy of all the glory, of all the praise. He's worthy. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. The mic is still open. If anybody wants to pray, there's still room. Hallelujah. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise, Father. You alone are worthy. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for the prayers of your saints. You said the prayers of a righteous man or woman develop much. Hallelujah. Has great impact. Hallelujah. And these prayers have went up to your ears. You said your word will not return to you for it. But you accomplish what therefore is sent to do. So we thank you for the prayers of the saints. We thank you for the prayers that are going up in this house. We thank you for the man of God. We thank you that three John 2 is in effect in his life. That as your beloved, he shall prosper, be in health, even as his soul prospers. So we thank you, Father, and praise you. Hallelujah. Lord, I just yield myself to you. That it's not me, it's you. Hallelujah. And that my words will not be influenced by any demonic voice but only by the Holy Spirit. I thank you, Father, that I'm an instrument that you have designed, that you have created for such a time as this. So I yield myself to you, sir, giving you all the honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Well, Happy New Year's, everybody. 2023 is here. Hallelujah. And I believe it's going to be an awesome year. I believe it's going to be a place where you can press in. I believe that 2022 was a year that he brought us out. You know, out from the pandemic, out from a lot of things. He brought us out. But I believe 2023 is a year that he's bringing us into. Into some things that we may have forgotten about. Some things that, you know, he wants to do in our lives. He wants to move us forward. He wants to create a momentum in you that takes you from yesterday to the present day of Jesus Christ. 
That's what he wants to do. Hallelujah. So it's always an honor and a privilege to come before you. When Pastor Rodney asked me to come forth, it's a little bit short notice, but praise God. One thing I have learned as a minister that I do not preach or come before a person just with a message I prepared for that. What I come with is out of my relationship with him. So my life is a study. My whole life is a study, a relationship, a desire to want to know what are you saying in this season, in this time that we're in. You know, I've learned that I need that because I can't look at all this other stuff going on. There's a lot of noise out here and technology makes it louder. We got a whole generation that all they know is technology, but very little experience. So I want to experience him. I want to know him. I want to understand what he's saying for me in 2023. So he gave me this for you. The three P's of 2023. Three P's of 2023. Three things that we should, I mean, there's more, but three things that we get these things and begin to do these things, we'll see the blessing and the ability of God to use and do whatever he wants to do through you. Hallelujah. The three P's for 2023. Hallelujah. We are Bible people, right? So it means you got a Bible with you or something, right? Hallelujah. So we're going to start off, hallelujah, with Philippians, verse 4. I've got some ringing going on here. Philippians, chapter 4, and we're going to start at verse 4. And we're using the New Living, the New Living Translation. Hallelujah. Three Ps for 2023. I thought that was pretty neat. It's f fresh off the press. Hallelujah. The three Ps, I'm going to give them to you. The first one is pray. The second one is praise. And the third one is press. Pray, praise, and press. The three P's for 2023. Hallelujah. We're going to read. Let me know when you got there. Y'all there? Say amen. Amen. Because I need to get there, huh? All right. It's on our screen. Starting with vote, uh, verse 6. It says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to what, man? To your neighbor, your best friend, you know, your sister. It says, let your request be made known to who? I only heard one person say that. To who? God. God is your source. Always is and always will be. But in 2023, we got to come to the revelation that God is your source first not your visa not your mastercard not your checking account not your degree god is your source first and he says verse 7 said and the peace of god which surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and mind through christ jesus prayer is important because we got a problem, especially now, especially now, it's called stress. I heard the other day they were saying that uh, those who do counseling, that the percentage has went up like 30 and 40 percent. People are seeking counsel, counselors, you know, Christian counselors, counselors. I have nothing against all that, but as a believer, Holy Spirit is your counselor. It's the word of God. 
And we may need some of that. But if you have not, do what this says. Be ancient for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. If you have not given that issue to him, you're missing out on the source. And we have a lot of believers now struggling and suffering because they have not went to the source. He's an afterthought. But he says, in everything, there's nothing left out. In everything. You see, and, and, and if I read it out the NLT, it says, the first thing it says, the NLT, don't worry. As a child of God, as part of a person who's in the kingdom of God, you're not, you're in this world, but you're not of this world. We got to come to that realization. He's saying, don't worry. Don't stress out. Don't sweat it. Why? God is your source in everything. Nothing he can't do. Nothing he can't accomplish. Nothing. Because he is your source. But the thing is, we got to see him that way. But the first thing that happens when we come to a circumstance, a trial, a tribulation, we what? Worry. We become fearful. The Bible used the word anxious. And we got to stop that. We got to grab hold of it. the fact that I know you, Abba. The word Abba means father. So if you're my father, I can run to you. I can boldly come to the throne of grace with a high expectation of his grace and mercy coming and moving in my life. So we got to get that. Don't worry about anything, but instead, what? Pray. Pray. Wow, well, uh, yeah, I think I pray. No, pray. Have a conversation with him. I've heard people told me, well, God knows everything. He knows I'm going through, yeah, but he wants the conversation. I give an example of me and my wife. She knows I love her. I know she loved me, but oh, the conversation. The conversation is important. What it does, it soothes our mind. It focuses us in on the source of that love. And that's Abba, Father. As believers in 2023, pray. Pray. Because if we read our Bibles in Matthew 25, it's, this is just the beginning. It's going to get darker and darker and darker, but you're praying, you're, you're having uh, uh, an exchange with God, you're having a, an intimate interaction with the Father. He's talking to you and you're listening and obeying and trusting. And you'll see your life begins to change. You become brighter as things get darker. Favor overtakes you. When everybody's struggling and anxious for something, you're at peace. Why? Because you prayed. You gave it all to the Lord. Don't be anxious. Don't let the high blood pressure stress. No, that's of the devil. That's a lie. I have given it to my father. And he's real. So it says, be anxious for nothing. I might look at this then. Pray about everything. Tell God what you need. And what it says? Thankfulness. I was loving it. Sister Terrell and my wife, they talk, talked about being thankful. It's powerful. Thanksgiving is powerful. Thanksgiving gives you focus on the what you are thankful about. 
So it says, and everything, tell God what you need. Thank him for what you, all he has done. Verse 7. It said, you will what? Experience. Your walk with the Lord is an experience. It is a journey. It is intimate. It's not coming to church. It's not fasting and prayer. That's part of it. But if you're not having an experience with him, I want to encourage you to pray, asking him for that experience. The presence of the Lord. The insurance that he got you covered comes through experience. Pray, my brother and sister, pray. And you experience what? God's peace. When, Jesus, when the angels came on the shepherd, they said this greeting, this salutation. Peace on earth, goodwill toward man. What does that mean? No more enmity between God and man. We can boldly go through God. We have access. And when you get in that presence, something happens. We know joy happens, but also peace. Because you are in righteousness. They said the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness come from him. It's your stand. It's your position in him as a believer. But because you have that position, there is joy and peace. You have access to that. You don't have to be anxious. The world can be anxious. You don't have to be anxious. Because you're not of this world. You're in it, but you're not of it. You belong to God. Pray. Talk to him. Exchange with him, in which exceeds anything we can understand. It doesn't make sense. Things all around you is in turmoil and confusion and all this stuff going on. But in your belly, in your heart, there's peace. Your mind can be doing all kinds of crazy stuff, but in your spirit, man, there's peace. In your spirit, man, I say, mind, peace, be still. You got that. That's what it means to have the greater one in you. Access it. How? Pray. And his peace, hallelujah, will guard your heart and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Your heart, your mind, your will, your emotion, your intellect, your creativity, your memory, it affects it all. Hallelujah. So number one, pray. I can keep going with that, but we're going to move on because I'll be on that all night, you want to. Number two, praise. Psalms 100. Psalms 100. Hallelujah. Psalms 100. And we're going to read from verse 1 down to 4. And these are familiar scriptures. But I just want to unpack them just a little bit. Because in 2023, we are going to pray more. We're going to praise more, and we're going to press. It says here, make a joyful shout to the Lord, all ye lands, all the earth. God consider us lands. We are made from the earth, but we're territory. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Now, I make a joyful noise. You know, I'm not like a Teddy or my wife. You know? I make a joyful noise. But you know what? I'm okay with it because I'm coming before him singing with joy. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's part of my experience with him. 
Know that the Lord, he is God. Bottom line, do you know him as God? What did that mean to you? Take the time and, and just go through the names of God. The great I am. That's what he said. Moses said, well, who do I say sent me? Just said, I am. I am everything you need whenever, when you need it. I am the creator of heaven and earth. I am the all-knowing, all-powerful, all-present one. I am. You got to know he's God. It ought to make you happy. You ought to get a shout in there. Hallelujah. Excuse me. Sorry. I couldn't help myself. Uh, well, hallelujah again. Glory to God. I'm telling you. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people. Hallelujah. And sheep of his pasture. He is your shepherd you shall not want. Shall not want. Do you believe it? You got to say it till you believe it. And then when you believe it, you'll walk in it. And you'll pray. And you will praise. Hallelujah. So enter into his gates with what? Thanksgiving. And into his court with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. Praise. Produce thanksgiving that produce praise. It's a cycle. Praise produce thanksgiving that produce praise, that produce thanksgiving, that produce praise, that produce thanksgiving, that produce praise, that produce thanksgiving and produce praise. It's a cycle of your life. Hallelujah. It's powerful. 2023, we are going to praise him more. Just take time with... Think about it. Bring to your remembrance the things that he has done for you. It's 2022, 2021, all the way back. Just bring it to your remembrance and just say, thank you. We praise you. Praise is, is an acknowledgement of what he's done. That gives you assurance that he'll do it again. Thanksgiving focus you in on the source of praise. Unfortunately, a lot of times as believers, we get into self-praise. We, we, we get stuck in the struggle. We get stuck in all this other thing. And the bottom line is, God, thank you for getting me here. Lord, because of you, I've got this job. Because of you, you positioned me to go to school. Because of you, so on and so forth. But it's because of you, and I give you praise. The song of Miriam. When Moses did it with the staff, they could have said, Moses was great. No, he could have did a whole lot of things. We walked through there fast. No, her, her song was to honor God who opened the Red Seas and the rider and, the, and, and all of them were killed. But she, first thing she did when she got on the other side was sang a song of thanksgiving. What do you do when you get to the other side of what's affecting you, what's bothering you? What do you do? Is it about you or is it about him? 2023, let's make it all about him. Praise him. Be thankful. We got to get that way. We're his children. We are sheep of his pastor. His pastor. Not ours. Matter of fact, I don't want none of mine to run out. His doesn't. His is forever. And he positioned us to be able to, to, to stay there, to live there, to walk this experience, this journey out of our lives in that place of thanksgiving. 
in that place of praise. That's your mindset. I don't care if things could be coming at you. Praise the Lord. It's interesting they say praise the Lord. If you don't have anything to be thankful for, just say praise the Lord. That'll cover that. I think that covers it well. Praise the Lord. We praise the Lord for Esau. We praise the Lord for Pastor Rodney, for Sister Jeanette. We praise the Lord for everyone in this place. All who have breath, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, let me watch my time. because. All right, let's stop. All right. Let's go to number three. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. God is so good. I just want to encourage you. He's already worked it out. You got to position yourself through prayer, through praise, and then you have to press. Fight the good fight of faith. Press. It's a lot of weak Christians. Whining, complaining, and fearful. Walking in unbelief. Don't know the word. First thing do when something happens, they don't pray. When something happened to them, that's good. They're not thankful. And then something happened that are bad, they're complaining instead of praising. But the issue is we have to learn like Paul learned to press. It says here, verse 12, not that I have already attained or am ready, already perfect. If you are under a ministry, I shouldn't say this, should I say that? Just hear my heart. If you're under someone that's leading you spiritually and they present themselves as have arrived or there's some super spiritual level, run, don't walk. Because Paul, all the things he wrote, the experience he has, and the, the power of his words today says this. <laughs> I have not that I have already attained or am I already perfected. When you see the word perfected or perfect in the Bible, it means mature. Not that you do everything right, but how grown are you? How spiritually grown up are you? And he's saying with all that he had, I'm not there yet. So if I get to somebody who could act like they have arrived and know it all, well, praise the Lord. God bless you. I love you. But I won't be here next week. Because I need the Lord. And I know you need him too. We all need him. Now there's people more mature and all that. And I'm not saying that. But how is it presented? And how are you presenting yourself to people you think you're spiritually more mature in? If you're at the same level Paul is, or Jesus, then you can do that. If not, all right, leave it alone, Cecil. Let's keep it moving. I'm sorry. I, I am, I'm not sorry, actually. That's what I'm, I'm going to do what it says here. But I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself as apprehended. But one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. He said, I press. I press. Press to what? Toward the goal for the prize of the upward calling of God in Christ Jesus. Well, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? 
What is Paul talking about? He says, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Forgetting those things that are behind. Throwing aside every weight that slows you down, especially sin. You do that. I love it. Well, God will take it away from me if he wanted. No, you do that. He said, let this mind be in him, be in you that is in Christ Jesus. How many let there are in the Bible? How many things he said, you do this. Think on these things. Lay aside every weight of sin, not him. You do it. You have to exercise a desire to press. That means let go of some things. Let go of some weights. Let go of some prejudice. Let go of some prejud prejudge. Prejudice is just prejudging somebody before you know them. Situations and circumstances. Because, well, I was here before. It's just like that. Maybe it's not. What should I do? Pray. But your mindset, your heart is to press. Let go of that. If you've been still dealing with sin for 25 years, I encourage you to let it go. Because God has given you the power to do it. He said, life and death is in the power of your tongue. Those who love it will eat the fruit thereof. You have power and authority over sin. You're free. You have a spirit in you called the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made you free from the law of sin and death. Jesus died so you could be free. But you got to press. It's not automatic. You got to press. You got to desire it. You know the reality of people, about people that's true? And I'm learning more and more. People do what they want to do. God even knows that. People would do what they want to do. That's why I say if you delight yourself in the Lord, he'll give you the desire of your heart. What is in your heart? What is your desire? And if it's not of the things of God, forget it. Throw it away. Lay it aside. Because it's hindering you from the goal. It's holding you back. Old, old relationships that didn't work out. Forget them. Let them go. Let Holy Spirit heal your heart. But if you hold on to it, he won't take it from you. You got to release it to him. Press, people, press. 23, 23, press. Don't be stuck in the same cycle that you were in 2022. God forbid. Press toward the mark of the high calling that is in Christ Jesus. The goal, deal with your sin. What is sin? Anything that missed the mark of righteousness. Anything that missed the mark of righteousness. Because we are the righteousness of God in Christ. So what you're doing is not in Christ. It's not... Uh, uh, it's not demonstrating your position in righteousness in Christ. Get rid of it. Forget about it. Let it go. 2023, I declare freedom from those things that weigh you down. So you can move forward. Forward momentum. He's bringing you into something. And it's good. Why? Because he's good. But you got to press. You can't be lazy Christian. We can't lay back. We got to press. You got to desire. We do it anyway. If you want something, if you really want to do it, you're pressing to it. He will. 
He'll take care of it. He says, not that I have already attained or I am perfect, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, my focus is forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. And a lot of people look at that as heaven. Yes, you're blessed, you're going to heaven. But the word of God says that we're supposed to live victorious here and now. Back it up a little bit. Heaven is yours. Don't worry about it. That's a good thing. But how are you living now? Like how you like me now? How are you living now? And he says, verse 14, I press toward the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So what's the goal? What is he pressing toward? What is it? What should be our goal in terms of our experience and relationship with Christ? Christian maturity is the goal. That's the only reason why you're still here. If it was just you going to heaven with fire insurance, you'll be saved and you're gone. But he has us here for a purpose. You know some of the things he called you? He called you his ambassador. He calls you instruments of righteousness. He calls you ministers of reconciliation. He calls you a lot of stuff before you go to heaven. He wants you to live like Christ here. So what it means? He wants you to grow up. Grow up. That's the goal. That's what Paul was pressing. So I, I'm not there yet. I got issues. Okay. You know, if I was driving on 20 and Paul, Paul was here, he might have cussed out the driver before. You know, he might have slipped out and dropped. You know, something may have happened. You know, he's, he's saying, I'm not quite there yet. But my focus is this. I'm pressing. I want to be like Christ. He's giving you the mind of Christ. He's giving you the spirit of the Lord is in you. But you have to press to make it come out of you where it will begin to affect everything around you. 2023, the maturity of Christ in you is going to affect everything around you. So the three things I just touched on them. Number one, become more prayerful. Number two, praise more. Exercise the heart and the mind of thanksgiving. And number three, press. Press into God like you've never done before. Press. He wants to, when you press in, he pours out. You're here to help somebody. You're an answer to prayer for somebody. God wants to do so much in your life in 2023. But you got to get out the way. You got to press past you. So he can be growing up and maturing in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, I think I did good on that time. So hallelujah. So Father, we just thank you for that word. Thank you that it bless, it's a blessing to those who hear it. Those who are watching online, those who are in the sanctuary. Lord, that in 2023, we be moved beyond ourselves. We acknowledge you as our source. That in everything, we will not be anxious, we will not be fearful, but we will pray. We will come to you first. We desire a greater experience with you. 
Hallelujah. And we thank you, Father. We will be so thankful. We will be grateful. We will give you praise in everything. We just acknowledge you as Lord. And we say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In everything, we praise you, Lord. And Lord, we have a heart to press. Our mind is to press. We want to be, we want to have our, the full image of Christ manifested in and through our lives. We let go of everything, every weight, every hurt, every pain, every success, everything that is hindering us from moving forward and maturing in you we let it go tonight in the name of Jesus every place in our heart that we are holding unforgiveness I pray that we let it go now in Jesus name any art we are holding toward anybody that we let it go in Jesus name any habits that we are doing that we hope nobody will see I pray that we let it go in Jesus name I pray that we have a heart to press into the things concerning you. We make it our goal to grow up spiritually in you. So I pray that in 2023, we will see a difference. We'll see a change. We'll see a greater manifestation of your glory because we pray, we praise, and we press. So I thank you for blessing him. And again, blessing Pastor Rodney. Blessing Miss Jeanette. Blessing this ministry. Thank you that you stretch forth your hand and you breathe on this. You touch it and you breathe on this. That it produces a greater glory in you. When people see it, they see you. When they see us, they see you. So we bless you and we praise you, Father. We give you all the honor and glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. Now, Pastor Rodney would hear, hear he would simply say, the doors of the church is open. And he would say something like this here at Asaw, if you want to be a member, <laughs> it's very simple. He, I, he has two questions and a form to fill out. And if you're online, you can do the same. Two questions. Why do you want to be a member of this church? And what ministry would you like to serve in? The why and the what? It's important. Anything you do, you probably should have a good understanding why you want to do it. And then why will determine what? And if you go, and he would say something like this, if there's a ministry that God laid on your heart that is not here yet, or, you know, you said you can develop it. His desire is to affect the community, to touch people's lives. So if you want to be a member, just answer the two questions and let them know. Hallelujah. Nothing deep, nothing hard. It's simple. It's a matter of the heart. And another thing that's a matter of the heart is your giving. I don't care what you call it, tithes and offerings, you know free will giving, love offerings, all this stuff. It's still a matter of your heart. The Old Testament was more legalistic. The New Testament, he said he loves a cheerful giver. Everything with your walk with the Lord, according to the new covenant, is a matter of your heart. So your giving should be a matter of your heart. 
Nobody should have to lock the door and say, we're going to take two more offerings. I've been in a service like that. Oh, let's lock the door. We need X amount of dollars. So they locked the door and wouldn't open the door until they got it. That is being forced. He said, don't give grudgingly or out of necessity. God loves us cheer. Cheerful giver. So tonight, give what God has laid on your heart. And if it's more than your mind can can can, can handle, if it tilts you, pray, praise, and press. That's where your blessings from. He is your source. God is your source. And he created a system to bless you. It's called seed, time, and harvest. And he's so wonderful. He gives you the seed, but he doesn't make you sow it. It's a matter of your heart. We can give an A saw if you're online. You can see it's on the screen. A-S-A-W-C-C dot O-R-G. You can go there and give. And if you're in the sanctuary, if you want to, we have envelopes on the back of the chairs. And there's a few information to fill out. And at the end of the service, there's two containers to my left and to the right. You just put it in there. So I believe, Father, that everyone who sold into this good ground will receive and harvest. Receive a return on their giving. So thank you for blessing them. And blessing this ministry. That there is no lack in the kingdom of God. And we are your citizens, Lord. So we thank you for that, Father. In Jesus' name. Tuesday Town Hall, 7 p.m. Online. I think you can go to the website and get the link. So it's a wonderful time of fellowship and sharing. So it's a good opportunity to, to just fellowship with one another. Hallelujah. So I'm going to close out in prayer. Father, bless everyone who have heard this word online and in the sanctuary. That they experience your goodness, experience your loving kindness, and your mercy. We thank you, Father, but by your stripes, we are healed. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, that you are our shepherd, that they shall not want. And I thank you for the peace of God and the blood of Jesus that covers them and their family. Thank you for revelation and knowledge. And thank you for your peace on it. In Jesus' name, amen. Good evening and have a blessed week.